Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at how to install and use the SDL3 library on the MinGW toolchain. Now, what is MinGW? Well, this is basically a collection of tools that maybe you'd find on, say, a Linux machine or a Mac or FreeBSD, things like the GCC compiler. And they've basically been compiled and some of the other tools ported over so that you can work with them on a Windows environment. So again, what this allows you to do is not use the Microsoft Visual Studio uh, and the Microsoft Visual Studio C++ compiler. And again, just use things using the same compiler and do things on the command line. So if that's what you want to do, this is the video for you. Now, I'm going to go through a few of the things. You'll see me debug a few issues, like when the SDL3 header file isn't found, when you get a linking error, what to do, even when the virus protection on Windows sort of gets in your way, how to enable or disable that. I'll do it you know, very quickly as an option. Of course, you want to you know, take things with your own risk and make sure you run antivirus and these sorts of things. But again, for the sake of just getting a Hello World SDL program up and running, I'll show you how to do it in this video here. So. Uh, this is just one option of how to get it set up with SDL. You can check out my playlist otherwise to see many other options as far as how to get things up and running. And hopefully it'll be helpful for you. Otherwise, feel free to engage with the community in the discussions below. Maybe other people will have other expert advice uh, and better ways to do things. But again, hopefully this will get you up and running. Okay, folks. So now that we're at the libsdl.org webpage, we can get ready to download SDL version 3. Again, the latest version will be at the top right here, and that's what we're going to want to use, whatever the latest stable version is. So 3.2 or anything later will work for this series. And again, we'll want to download uh, SDL here. Now, again, I'm going to be showing you how to use a command prompt. So again, if you want to just type out something like this and compile on the command line, feel free to do that. If you're looking for something else, again, I have a bunch of installs on my series. And if you're specifically on Windows, you might also consider using Visual Studio. So anyways, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and make sure that we download the appropriate uh, set of libraries here for SDL3. And again, it's important that we download the MinGW uh, version here. And again, we're going to go with the developer uh, library so we get everything. Uh, and I'll actually just download the zip. It doesn't matter if you do the tar or the zip file. Uh, either is fine. Uh, you don't want to use the Visual Studio uh, zip here. I mean, it might work, but again, you want to compile things with the MinGW compiler. That's, again, what the developers are probably testing with and, and folks using. So again, let's go ahead and download that library. Now, the second thing that we're going to need is a compiler. And again, if you're not familiar with MinGW, basically this is um, a like port, uh, I guess, for Windows, uh, as is mentioned here, for the GCC compiler toolchain. Uh, and you can probably use other things like Clang uh, in this environment if you want. Uh, but again, this is specifically for GCC uh, as it states here. So that's what we're going to use. So anyways, I'm going to go down here um, and let's find uh, a min GW. And again, I'm on a 64-bit system. So you'll find uh, you know various tool chains and such here. Uh, but again, on this website here is where I'm going to go for. Uh, and again, you can you know search for min GW Windows 64 here for getting set up in building native applications. And again, you could use a couple of these different ones like MySys, uh, I've had success with um, MinGW, W6 builds here uh, has been fine. Maybe WinLibs, uh, I'm gonna use this W64 dev kit. Uh, it looks like it's got one of the later versions of GCC, which at the time is 14. So looks like that's up to date. So I'm gonna go to that. Um, and again, it's got, uh, if you wanna build this from source, you can go to the GitHub page here. I'm just gonna, well, let's just go to the GitHub page. You can go directly to the releases here, uh, but you can read a little bit more about the project here. But again, this sort of is a uh, console environment, if you will, or otherwise all of the tools that you're used to using in say a Linux environment uh, have already been compiled and are running on Windows here. So things like GDB, Vim, C tags, you know, a lot of the developer tools that you would need here. So again, if you're doing cross platform development, this could be really, really nice. Uh, again, not, not much has changed other than you type out g++.exe instead of just g++ like on Linux. So anyways, what you want to do is go over here to the right on releases. Let's go ahead and click on that and we'll just download the latest release uh, of the Windows 64 dev kit here. Uh, and let me go ahead and just make sure I download the 64-bit one because we're on a 64-bit system, but again, you might have x86. Uh, and again, if you're on like an ARM machine or something, you might have to choose one of these different um, MinGW pre-compiled systems. Uh, so again, that might be one thing to consider, but uh, like if you're on like a Microsoft Surface or something, I think some of those are ARM machines, but again, most of you are probably on x86 uh, machines, like if you have an Intel machine or an AMD machine, uh, that's often the case. 
Uh, so anyways, uh, let's see. It looks like I'm getting a little warning here. I'm going to trust this file here. Uh, let's see. Show more. Uh, I want to keep this because <laughs> we're going to want to install. So we'll give Windows Virus Checker or whatever a moment to take care of that. And then I'm just going to hit open here so we can start uh, installing this environment. Uh, I'm just going to install it into downloads here. That's good enough. Um, you know, you might want to put it in a more permanent location because I tend to delete my downloads. But again, uh, just keep track of that here. Uh, but we can see W64 dev kit is going to be installed there. Here's our executable. Uh, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and make sure that we extract the contents of the uh, SDL3 uh, library here. That's going to include the library in DLL uh, that we need to link to and compile, and we can uh, get set up with that. Okay, so we'll have our library here. And let's see, it looks like our installation has finished. Great. Uh, so we're pretty much done with uh, downloading stuff here. Uh, and now what we're going to do here, and I'll try to, uh, let me try to just kind of move stuff around so we can keep things sorted. Uh, we've got two things going on here. We've got the left here, which is going to be our development environment. Again, that contains all of our compilers. Uh, and on the right side, SDL here. So again, let me just sort of orient you in SDL. Um, again, I'm on a uh, x86 uh, 64-bit machine here, so I'm going to choose uh, this one here. Uh, and then again, I have my includes. For the header files for SDL, again, this first one is the one that we're going to need to include in some project. Uh, and then we'll go back here. And then I have my libraries here, uh, which I'll need this uh, DLL file uh, to link to. Uh, and let's see, in the bin, I'm going to need to put this SDL3.dll file uh, within wherever I build my project. Okay, so that's the idea here. Uh, and then in my uh, dev kit here, let's go into the bin here. You can see I've got all these you know, nice projects here. Uh, I guess I've got like C++, EXE. Uh, let's scroll down to the one that really matters for us, right? Our GCC uh, compiler or G++, uh, et cetera. So that's what we need here. Uh, now, if I double click on this, um, you know, it'll pop up a command prompt, I guess, for us quickly. <laughs> that's what we got here. Uh, but let's at least open up a command prompt because, again, we want to just do this in like a regular command prompt. Uh, and I should be able to CD into that uh, directory here and then type out g++.exe and uh, you know no problem here it says you know no input files uh, let's see uh, I should have vim uh, .exe here or vi let me see if it's vi exe uh, oh maybe I don't maybe I don't have any text editor oh well <laughs> I thought it was in here but uh, let's see do we have vim okay maybe it doesn't bundle all of our favorite tools as some of you know I have vim user Okay, maybe it's got a Vim uh, install or a VI bat here uh, that you can run. But anyways, you just need some text editor to type stuff in uh, here. Um, but anyways, what we might want to do here is save this location into path. Uh, what do I mean by that here? Okay, just to make your life a little bit easier. Let me open up another command prompt uh, here in a second one. And again, I'm just using command prompt. This isn't PowerShell. PowerShell might also work, but if I go here and I type in G++ EXE, it doesn't work here. Uh, now, Windows has this special path uh, environment variable here uh, that you might want to set, meaning you can say path equals path and then separate by uh, semicolons, you could append onto it, okay? So now if I type uh, exe, uh, gplus.exe, you can see that it's uh, updated here. Okay, now let's see if it updated this shell here. Uh, in fact, while well, we're in this directory, uh, so it might not update uh, shells that you don't already have open, uh, but that should take care of otherwise updating your uh, path here. So again, just to demonstrate, opening up another command shell. Uh, okay, maybe it didn't uh, work for us. Oh, well. Um, but the point is you can update that in your environment variables. Uh, let's just do this properly here. Uh, let's edit our system and environment variables just to make this a little bit easier here. Uh, I believe we want to go into our environment variables here. Uh, and here is path if we want to update this permanently. Let's update it. Uh, and I'm going to add here that location. OK. And OK. OK. And let's go ahead and close this out. Let's close our command prompt out. I'll hit the window key, open up a command prompt. And now I should be able to type gpsplus.exe and it'll just find it anywhere. Okay, so that's uh, the thing that's going to be handy for us. Okay, so now we actually want to build a little SDL project. Okay, and again, I've got my SDL library 
uh, here on the uh, le right side here. I'm going to get rid of this window because we don't need it. And um, I literally just need somewhere where I can paste in some text and an SDL example. So let's go here and do SDL3. Let's look at the wiki and let's just grab a uh, example here. Uh, so let's go over to the official uh, release. Oh, oops, we're already at the releases here. Uh, let's just go to the complete index here. I think if I search like create window and render, I've been using this as an example. Again, just because it's using SDL3 here. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and just take this code. I'm going to right click and copy that code. Okay, and I just need to put uh, a new project somewhere. Um, so again, let's literally just, I don't know, this is just a new uh, <laughs> uh, Windows environment here. I'm literally just going to do this in Notepad because I don't really care. <laughs> I just need it to uh, save somewhere. So let's save this file. Uh, sure, I'll put it in uh, downloads here. Uh, and this is going to be main.cpp. Okay, so main.cpp, there we go here. Okay, so now that we got a little file here, let's open up our command prompt. Let's uh, cd into my downloads directory. Uh, and let's see, I believe I had main.cpp there. Uh, let's try to compile this with our G++ here. Uh, and then I'll use dash o, make this prog.exe. Uh, let's go think about it. No, it's not going to work here, right? Uh, why? Well, if I look at my source file on Notepad, uh, I'm trying to include this header, but I don't know where the path is, right? So I got to tell it where include is uh, on this side here. So G++ here. Uh, I need to include wherever this directory is, okay? Uh, and let's go ahead and make sure we save this path here. I'm going to control C. And in my compilation, just right click here. Let's include that path here. I'll hit enter. And it's thinking, it's thinking, a little bit more thinking. Uh-oh, bunch of errors here. Okay, what are these errors? Well, they're not compilation errors anymore. But if I look carefully, they're linker errors with undefined reference to, you know, SDL, whatever. So basically, it can't find, you know, it's, it's found the header file, but it can't find the actual source code, right? So a linker, ld.exe, is not able to find that uh, actual code here. Uh, so what I need to do here is in my SDL library, two things here. Uh, I need to, you know, pass in the library path, uh, I believe here. Let's see. Well, there's, there's actually, I think, two things I need to do here. So let's uh, set this up in our command prompt here. Uh, let's go ahead and rerun this again. And let's pass in the library path to the lib folder here for SDL. Uh, I'll hit enter. And, ooh, still, still getting that error here. Okay, so uh, it's not finding this uh, file here. So, again, I need to pass in the file that I want to link to. Uh, and that's going to be SDL3. Uh, let's try enter there. And voila, okay, it works here. And again, just by convention, you don't have to pass in the lib or, you know, the .dll. Uh, you know, if I'm linking in some library here, it just sort of knows here. So let me kind of make that a little bit easier so you can see on one line here. Uh, here was the library path to where my libraries are. And then the last part is linking in the SDL library. Okay, and then I've got my include here, uh, which is this part, and then my normal like compile on the command line and output an exe called prog.exe. Okay, uh, now we're almost done. We're almost to that step here. Uh, let's try to run this again. Oops, I don't know what happened. Why my terminal got crazy? Let's see. Clear. There we go. <laughs> okay, so go compile this. Run prog.exe here. Uh, or actually just prog.exe here. Uh, and it's going to say, okay, now we're crashing. Why are we crashing? Well, we know where the references are, so to speak, um, because we've linked in the library, uh, but we don't have the actual implementation code. And I talk a little bit about this and show you a tool called uh, lib.exe in my Visual Studio uh, video if you want to check that out. But basically what I need to do here is go into bin and copy this SDL3 DLL uh, into, well, wherever my project is, which in this case, uh, I apologize, you know, I have main here, prog.exe here, uh, and then I'll paste in SDL3 in this directory, okay? So now I'm going to run this, and it is almost going to work, okay? So I'm going to run it. Uh, oops, let's let's try again here. Let's, let's rebuild it, 
Okay, make sure we get prog.exe, generate it in downloads. Uh, let's run prog.exe. Now my Windows security is going like nuts here, but let's try to run it. Uh, here we go. Should be in downloads. There it is. Uh, maybe I can double click it here. Operation. Okay, it thinks it's a virus here. Uh, let me dismiss this. <laughs> uh, Windows Defender is going to you know make my life harder here for no reason. Uh, let's see here if I can. Uh, Windows security. Okay, so if you get this here, you're gonna have to like mark it as safe here. The, the other thing that you could do if you are having issues with this, uh, usually if you run as administrator, um, this is actually good that this debugging uh, is happening here. Let's copy this just so we don't have to type this out again. Uh, let's let's try to open up another command prompt uh, and run as an administrator. Let's see if it'll trust me more here. So if I go into C, uh, and I don't care in particular if this works. I just want to show you that this is something that I have run into a couple times. Uh, let's go into downloads. Let's try to recompile here. Um, and okay, we got to turn off Windows Defender now because <laughs> it's getting uh, a little bit annoying here. Windows security. Okay, and if Windows is getting uh, you know in your way here, uh, what you could basically do here is. Uh, go to your virus and threat protection here and let's go ahead and do manage settings I'm just going to turn this off for now let's just go ahead and compile I go ahead and run this program and I am getting one more error here couldn't create surface from image couldn't open sample BMP you know the system cannot find the specified file here um, okay, so what was the issue? Well, it's looking for loading an image here called sample.bmp. Uh, so we do need to provide that in the same directory here. Uh, so in, in this case, downloads. So I'm just going to go into paint uh, and let's go ahead and just create a, uh, this is a sample image called sample.bmp in the same directory. Uh, so we want to do something like that. And let's just go ahead and save this out as a BMP picture. Uh, I'll go ahead and put this in downloads and sample.bmp and save there. Okay, so now we should be able to run this uh, because we can see in our downloads folder uh, we have sample BMP and the same relative file path to our program exe. Uh, and there we go, we've got SDL up and running here. Okay, so overall, you know, there are more things you might want to set up. You might want to download an actual code editor. Maybe that's Visual Studio or VS Code or Vim. You can check out my Vim lessons for that. Um, you might have to deal with uh, Windows security, and you might actually have to be careful uh, with this, and you might want to also work in not your downloads directory <laughs> because, you know, again, that, that could have also been triggering the issue here as far as uh, protections. Um, so anyways, those are a few little things to work on. Sometimes you have to run your command prompt as administrator. Uh, some folks I have seen will also be able to run this in PowerShell as well, but I usually just use the command prompt. And again, you might need to download a different tool chain if you're on ARM, for instance. Um, but this one uh, worked for me and worked well enough um, and overall seemed to be fine. So anyways, folks, there you have it. You can now run in the command line programs, very, very similar to how you do in uh, a Linux or Mac environment. But again, you do have to have that DLL in the same folder as wherever this executable is being generated. And uh, make sure you still link your library uh, and add your include paths. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully that helped and we'll see you in the next one. So there you have it, folks. We were able to get our SDL3 program up and running on the command line. Congratulations. Hopefully you made it that far. If for some reason this didn't work, you can go ahead and debug. You can engage in the community below and try to get a little bit of help. And as always, there are other videos on this playlist that you can also try for just getting things up and running for Visual Studio, for instance, as another alternative on the Windows platform. Or if you have access to a Linux machine, you could follow the Linux directions or a VirtualBox. Again, I have videos on how to get things set up with VirtualBox as well, if you find that useful. Again, if you're using SDL for like a class, for instance, and it's just a matter of getting something set up, you know, feel free to follow any of my video tutorials to get set up. And, you know, usually that's good enough so that you can at least make some forward progress. Anyways, folks, hope you had fun. And again, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.